So now uh, let's look at the effect of the uh, grid inductance of on uh, three phase rectifiers. So just to remember, now we have those inductances. Again, these inductances are just uh, parasitic inductances. There's not we are uh, specifically putting on, but they are they are due to the cable length and so on. So let's say uh, for simplicity, again we are ignoring those things and assuming we are uh, supplying a DC current source and now I have those inductors so I mean, in the previous case remember uh, the current waveform at A was something like that so again it has sharp edges so this was uh, IA but if we have those things and if we have those inductances the VL is equal L di over dt so that implies we will have infinite infinite current so it is not really possible to uh, turn off an inductor current immediately to zero so that waveform has to be modified you know it doesn't really come to stop immediately so and on the other side that inductor would like to draw and uh, sorry that current source would like to draw a constant ID current through here so it has to come from one point let's say again this is 10 amps and if that one is let's say at first 10 amps and then it will come down to uh, zero and let's say I don't know that current is coming from uh, phase C right it, that one cannot go to immediately to 10 amp and then that inductor cannot go down to zero amp so at one instant that will first go to 9 amp and that will first go to 1 amp so they will add up okay so 9 amp and 1 amp and then after that will be at some point at 8 amp and this will be 2 amps until that one comes to 0 and this will reach to ID and during that time okay during that time both D1 okay both D1 and both D5 they are all conducting so in this case not only you know again they are going back through through phase B let's say but at the during the commutation time and remember commutation means also overlapping time so during that overlap time phase A and phase C conduct at the same point and hence we have the commutation so let's uh, look at uh, that thing okay so I'm um, during that instant during that instant I have phase A through D1 right and I have phase C through D5 and I have the current source and the return path is B so if I simplify that circuit that is what we have here I have A okay I have D1 is conducting, D5 is conducting, and the return path is 6, right? So let's write, let's write the uh, uh, Kirchhoff voltage uh, equations here, okay? So mesh and uh, mesh equations in that voltage waveform. So let me get rid of uh, myself. So what you can write, and let's define that thing as... Uh, I U it is given here but just to emphasize so we have I U uh, mesh current here and since we have that current source basically we have ID mesh current flowing through here so I can write okay uh, I can write here if if I know I A I can write the inductor uh, voltage as V LA is equal to LS times DIA over DT okay and IA if you look at that mesh okay that mesh is equal to IU current U is for the uh, commutation so I can write DS DIU U over DT right and I can write the VLC 
okay from that inductor voltage again it is ls times dic over dt and what is ic okay ic is ls d and ic is id okay it's flowing in that direction minus i u it's id minus i u right over dt and since that one is constant the derivative of that constant will be zero and that thing will be equal to the vlc inductor uh, voltage will be equal to ls uh, there's minus here so we have minus di u over dt so that one you know says to us the inductor voltage is equal to if you know it is a balanced system we have equal uh, inductances between each phase so the rate of change of the uh, current at the ia is equal to rate of the decrease okay minus rate of the uh, increase so we have the decrease in the that current i mean that makes sense because when you add that one and that one it needs to make a constant current so if that one is one amp the other one will be nine amp if this is two amps the other one will be eight amps and that equation uh, tells us that one right so what happens if i let's draw the mesh voltages across here so i have vcn okay minus van plus vla minus vlc right that those things will be equal to zero from qvr so i can write that one as v a n okay minus v c n it is equal to v l a minus v l c so i simply write uh, the mesh uh, voltages through here and i can write that one in terms of those equations this is ls di u over dt this is minus ls and there's another minus so that one will be equal to 2 ls di u over dt right and what is van minus vcn okay van minus vcn is uh, the a minus neutral uh, sorry a phase a voltage minus phase c voltage is equal to line to line voltages by the way i can write that one is as uh, ls diu over dt is equal to van minus vcn uh, divided by two right so then the idea is i would like to i would like to get the integral so it is uh, the same trick that we do it with the single phase system so we just integrate okay but then uh, don't forget to multiply uh, with omega because these are sine omega t right anyway so if i do that let me continue here i have omega ls zero to id because i'm going through that one and that all period is uh, u the time u is the time required for commutation right di u is equal to zero to u and now i will integrate that part b a n minus v c n divided by two d omega dt right and let's write that one b a n minus v c n it is equal to the line to line voltage this is v a c and this can be written as square root two v l l times sum sine so it right so the subtraction of a n minus v c n gives you the line to line voltage so that is why i write that one and this is the rms value and i multiply it by uh, square root two right 
So if you if you integrate that part, let me go down. If you integrate that part, it it becomes uh, the same with the uh, single phase circuits. Okay, zero to uh, ID DIU is equal omega LS ID again. You know this is what you get from the integral and the other one is square root 2 VLL again it is the same thing with the uh, single phase rectifier but the only difference is I have not to phase voltages but line to line voltages divided by 2 so it is if you just write that thing to here there's divided by 2 and I am taking the integral so you know the integral of uh, sine is minus cosine and I'm subtracting those things and you know uh, the cosine 0 gives you 1 so I have y uh, here it's 1 minus cosine u right and of course that one is still the area and from here I can calculate the cosine the time required for uh, commutation as uh, 1 minus 2 omega ls id divided by square 2 VLL All right and you can calculate the time and if let's say I'm mean, just to double check if LS is equal to 0 you know that term is equal to 0 and cosine u is equal to 1 when u is equal to 0 so there will be no commutation time alright and again uh, similar to the single phase case if we have a large ID the commutation times gets bigger and again we have if you have a high frequency or if you have a higher uh, impedance let me say omega L term then the uh, commutation time gets bigger and with the increasing voltage again the commutation volt gets smaller right so uh, let me let me write uh, the other one and now for for that voltage okay for that voltage I will just write uh, VPN I mean that that voltage here so VPN is equal to VAN minus LS DIU over DT and that one is equal to VAN plus VCN divided by 2 great and you can you know check that one uh, VAN let me write that one this is uh, LSDI LSDIU over DT is equal VAN minus VCN divided by 2 if you remember it from here let me use the red one okay so I am putting that equation for that one and I have VAM voltage and let me write it in the long form anyway VAN minus VAN minus VCN divided by 2 it is 2 VAN minus VAN so it becomes VAN and plus VCN divided by 2 right and what is that voltage what is VPM voltage this is the voltage during commutation so remember in the single phase uh, rectifiers we had zero voltage because both of those inductors are conducting and I would like to calculate uh, that voltage and I can uh, calculate it either from here VAN you know minus that value VAN minus uh, VLA or you can actually go from VCN you know plus uh, sorry again minus uh, VLC it will just give you the same voltage and I would like to calculate VPN and you can say why we didn't uh, count that inductor because from that inductor this is still DC okay we have uh, commutation between these two phases but it is still DC here and since it is DC that VL voltage over that one is zero right 
So you can uh, say the commutation is half of these uh, two voltages. So they are not giving A phase voltage, they are not giving phase C voltage. But if the commutation is happening between phase A and phase C, uh, the output voltage is the average of these two. Right? And again, if you recall it from the uh, single phase uh, commutation time, so this is and that one are the area lost during commutation. So I can I can say AU is uh, omega ls i d. So this is the area lost. Right. So maybe I should show uh, here that is better. So without the commutation, okay, without the commutation, you would have that waveform. Of course, this is the phase voltages, and the output voltage will be here. This representation is from phase to neutral voltages, and during the commutation. So now the commutation is happening from phase A, okay and phase C. So during commutation time my output voltage is just staying you know maybe like a horizontal line but the actual waveform is just the average of uh, VA and, and VCM voltage so I will have that green area okay I will have that green area lost and instead of following through here my output voltage uh, will go down to here so I, I lost that area so and that area is you know either you can write it like that or you can represent it like omega ls id but the important thing is how many times you have in a in a full bridge rectifier so there are like six transitions okay let me put my form so there are like six transitions if we could just go back and let's look at the output voltages so I will have that transition I will have that transition that, that transition so on so I'm getting into the uh, commutation six times in a period so whenever there is some lost area okay in those areas and I will lose that thing by uh, six times in a period so what can I uh, write is you can say I am total uh, time or total voltage I lost is six times of that value and again this is a not the actual voltage but the area so I need to get the average voltage and I can divide it by 2p or you can say that thing is happening every 60 degrees so you can divide it by p over 3 so they actually give the same result okay 3 omega ls id so my output voltage will be i mean this is let's say voltage without commutation minus okay delta v okay or i can write that one remember 1 over 35 vll 540 volts minus 3 over p omega ls id so this is uh, the reduction in our voltage and again you know ls is ls is uh, usually uh, constant in the grid so if you think about it uh, what is its effect as a function of the current let's say that current when you are not uh, drawing any current then you get 540 volts right but your output voltage will go down maybe not as drastically as that one but actually if you go 
to higher and higher uh, currents, then you will have some reduction due to that component. And that component gets bigger with the impedance of the line grid or with your uh, rated current. So you know, that is the area and let me write those things. And again, it is quite uh, difficult to visualize that thing. And again, mathematically, it is quite challenging. And so I advise you to make those derivations and you can find the detailed steps in the textbooks, Mohan. And again, you can check that link. And again, uh, there's uh, an online tool I would like to play. I would like to play with these two simulations. I just put a, a commutation simulation with I think it was one millihenry. So you can just uh, click it on my uh, presentations and you can open it your browsers and you can play with what happens if you change the frequency or what happens if you increase the current. And actually Multisim, uh, it's a nice online tool and if you would like to see other simulation examples, you can have a look at those things. Okay, that's all for today.